good morning chess friends i am back again with uh, another video or uh, as part of my series covering smith mora gambit and this really is a very interesting gambit in blitz and bullet games but it is sometimes played in uh, longer games also in tournament games and sometimes in simuls when a grandmaster is playing against uh, other players uh, fairly weaker than them in a simultaneous exhibition match or something like that and it really is very effective and this game we are going to have a look at this uh, look at today's uh, basically a simul game probably played in 1977 in london between fairly young nigel sort only 20 years 12 years old at that time against uh, anatoly kapo and kapo was at his peak during this time so fairly inexperienced and young nigel sort played more against gambit against uh, kapo and it is really difficult to hold advantage against someone like kapo in a gambit so fairly young and energetic nigel sort tried it probably because of uh, it was a simul game so let's have a look at this game i just saw white pieces and anatoly kapo black pieces so e4 played by short c5 sicilian defense by anatoly kapo and then d4 so c takes d4 and c3 this is the main version of the mora gambit sometimes few players here play d3 so to avoid giving white open c file and giving back the pawn so if like if uh, white captures pawn on d3 with bishop then he has to move his bishop again so that way he may also lose the tempo so there is uh, one line going like on to d3 bishop takes d3 and that is another thing what was played in the game was straight forward capture on c3 and then knight takes c3 knight c6 knight f3 e6 Bishop c4, a6, a typical knight of move, but it can be very useful in Mora Gambit also. And here, what was played in the game was a3, but uh, that maybe was played to avoid the pin defense that black sometimes can successfully employ against Mora Gambit. So pin defense is uh, something like bishop goes to b4 and then white have to play bishop to d2 to unpin the knight and if white straight forwardly castles instead of unpinning the knight black can capture on the c3 square so that way white have to recapture with a pawn and then there is no open c5 for white to attack for white rooks so what was played in the game was a3 to avoid probably the pin defense in smith mora gambit but there is another alternative suggested by stockfish very strong chess engine stockfish 4 that is castle and the line goes like this here position is still equal and with this idea to sacrifice knight on f7 the king takes f7 then bishop takes c3 if king takes c3 then this is fairly equal because black king is exposed and black pieces are undeveloped on the king side and white can start attacking the king in the center but uh, this kind of variation may work very well in blitz and bullet games but not in a <laughs> very long game especially against kapo 
somebody like Kafo who defends stubbornly so it is not easy still this is a possible line if you want to check it analyze it at home uh, there is a PGN file and PDF printout link to this video and also on my blog if you want to download it and want to analyze it deeper so what was play was A3 and after that D5 by Capo Bishop to A2 and Bishop to E2 both variations are possible what was played in the game was Bishop A2 so Bishop E2 is like still eyeing the F7 square a weak point in Black's camp and that is usually targeted by all attacking players especially in Eidorf and in Mora Gambit another similar opening so Bishop E2 was played in the game but another possibility suggested by Stockfish was Bishop to E2 here also white can achieve equality even with less material a pawn down remaining a pawn down because of the positional plus line goes like this and here also white successfully employs his rooks on open files on C and D D is semi open file but uh, it may open very soon and black has to open it to liberate his pieces so there are great chances of white achieving much much easier position to play in these lines but what was played in the game was bishop a2 after b5 and then b4 queen to c7 is another possibility if you want to check it out instead of directly playing b4 so here a line goes like this black eventually plays b4 to liberate his pieces but his king's side pawn structure is ruined and here it is fairly close and there is still some slight advantage for black but what was played in the game was b4 by Carpo directly because that variation was uh, very complicated and maybe Carpo was playing more than one player at the time so he naturally tried to avoid complications so he takes b4, bishop takes b4, castle, knight g2 e7, bishop to g5, another possibility is bishop to e3, and then black castles, but what was played in the game was bishop g5, that is almost uh, reaching equality for white, here white is now equal, though white is a pawn down, capo castles, and there always is an idea of sacrificing knight on d5 square in Mura Gambit especially when your rooks are on c and d5 already on c and d5 but here in this position rooks are not on c and d5 and what basically problem for black is that black cannot capture the knight with his own knight on e7 because it is pinned to black queen on d8 so here e takes d5 is only possibility because he cannot capture with his knight another alternate suggested by chess engine stop f4 was took to b8 and after bishop b4 knight is captured and black regains lost material line goes like this and here white is slightly better but nothing sort of winning advantage or something like that but what was played in the game was e takes d5 and after e takes d5 queen to c7 x6 d takes c6 rook to c1 this is slightly dubious move by Nigel short and what was recommended was queen d4 
by stockfish and sample line goes like this in this variation and here white probably is equal because he can have his rook either rook or queen on the seventh rank though white still is a pawn down but position is fairly equal and rawish because there is no pass pawn for black on the queen side and black has three pawn islands so what was played in the game was rook c1 after that a5 queen finally goes to e2 a very common position for queen in mora gambit bishop a6 and bishop c4 bishops are exchanged on c4 square rook f2 e8 queen moves to e4 rook a to c8 rook f to c1 queen d7 and here after h4 position is that equal with slight advantage for black and that was played in the game another line suggested by stockfish was queen to c2 queen going back instead of creating any weakness on the king side and here it is almost equal here also white is slightly better but nothing sort of winning advantage or anything like that but what was played in the game was h4 f6 attacking bishop bishop has to move back to e3 knight to f5 queen to g4 trying to go in for the kill and also trying to pin the knight on f5 so h5 you cannot allow queen to stay there for longer or white can move knight to b4 and then bishop to c5 and then somehow can probably win a piece or slight material on f5 square so queen h3 was played and this really was a bad move and this was a blunder actually what carpo replied was queen e6 that also was blunder c5 was almost winning at that point and here probably better move for short was to take the pawn on h5 and knight takes it here say white is two pawns down but his position is fairly good and in this position the white is a pawn down this position can be hold to a draw if uh, white plays precisely but what was played in the game was queen h3 and carpo's reply was also not very good straight forward c5 is really strong because here black has a decisive advantage after something like this but what was played in the game was queen to e6 in this position when Nigel short moved his queen back to h3 carpo moved his queen to e6 bishop to c5 trying to exchange bishop putting more pressure on f5 knight if it is exchanged on the c5 square that clearly was avoided knight was moved queens are exchanged and here short retreated his rook back to c2 bishop takes c5 rook takes c5 and here uh, 
this is uh, wrong move wrong root move to c4 square probably and still position is fairly equal what was suggested by stockfish was root to c2 and a sample line goes like this and here also the it is almost equal so what was played in the game was rook f to c4 after rook b3 long maneuvers and here there is slight advantage for black but there is nothing sort of clear win for black because black is going to lose one of the pawns on queen side and the black has two pass pawns on queen side only one of them can survive but one of them is going to be decisive in this game but this has nothing to do with the mora gambit as what was uh, played in the opening was perfect and actually shot achieved real equality but in the end game maybe due to his poor technique he lost this game and remember that Nigel Short was only 12 years old when he played against Carpo in this game and Carpo was fairly strong almost at his peak when this game was played in 1977 so it has nothing to do with the opening so let's check out the remaining of the game and here now it is we can say materially equal but black has dangerous pass pawn on queen side and on a file and black easily can convert it to a queen if white is not very active and is not very active in his uh, defense of the a pawn queening so that actually happened in the game And here a2 move was slightly dubious but actually it became the winning move in the end because it forced to, to a1 very passive square now king to f5 king to d2 and this actually was a blunder king d3 was a better move and here white still has uh, equality line suggested by stockfish going like this and here both white and black king are in zoo line so it is dead equal nobody is going to win this game in this current position but what was played was king d2 and that was a mistake probably lack of technique king to d4 still here short has the last chance to move his king to c2 and to save the game in the long variation suggested by stockfish like this and here both side queens and this is probably a draw but what was played in the game was rook a3 check after king a3 so king going back to e2 Rook check on h1, rook going back, 
and here it is clearly losing now because all these moves are mostly forced here rook a5 is possible instead of what was played in the game king c4 so rook a5 check and here also there is a line that leads to the mate we can clearly see it that white cannot win this game rook down but what was played in the game was king c4 and after that rook back to a1 king to b3 rook to c1 and capo queen on a1 and here at this point short finally resigned in view of the following variation that leads to a forcing mate and this is checkmate so short lost to capo but his opening was successful we can say he lost in the end game and in the next video we are going to see few more mora games played in this gambit so till then bye bye